What's going on, everyone? Dr. Todd and Danny from the Move Now Chiropractor. What episode is this? This is 280. Whoa. 280? 280. 280. Cool. Episode 280. We're going to talk about the hiring process because a lot of chiropractors we talk with are feeling what all of us are feeling around the country where people just don't want to work. They're getting free government money. They're sitting at home sucking on the government's teat and they don't want to get a job. They are doing interviews just to stay on unemployment. Uh, all these dirt bags out there, how to avoid them and find quality people. You can tell I'm a, I'm a little bit frustrated with it. So we're going to get real with you and we're going to tell you what we're doing, what we found that's worked because we have a killer team. We have a new hire we just brought on who's excellent and Danny's going to share a lot of the behind the scenes process. So let's get rolling. Here's what so many chiropractors have been searching for. How can we expand our clinical reach by finally addressing more than just the segmental component with our patients, but at the same time, not feel like we are selling out our chiropractic principles. The reality is our patients count on us to guide them. And when it comes to results, we must also address their posture and their movement. The verdict is out. Patients have spoken, and this is what they want and what they need, focusing on functional movement and corrective exercise. So how do we practice in a way where our community is engaged, excited, and seeking us out because of this comprehensive, results-based approach? That's the goal we've all been searching for, and this podcast will show you how. My name is Dr. Todd Pickman, and welcome to the Move Now Chiropractor. All right, we are back. So Danny is going to take it away on this one. Danny... Tell us about, are there birds chirping? There are. I'm going to close this window. <laughs> uh, as I close that, tell us a little bit about just the past hiring process back in the day before the world turned crazy. So before the world turned crazy, we used to have to turn off our Indeed ads after a couple of days because we had so many applicants that we had to go through. Uh, for one ad, we would get anywhere between 50 and 75 applicants and a good percentage of those were quality applicants after this whole unemployment situation uh now we have ads running for months and months and months and we would have maybe two to three quality applicants in a four-month span yeah that's nuts yeah Okay. So Indeed, first off, we're we're using Indeed primarily. We've thought about going to other platforms, but we stuck with Indeed this last mm -hmm. time around. We were about to add, we're, we're about to run all the ones, but then we found our, our current new hire. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so I think we kind of got lucky with her, which is almost how you feel every time you find someone that's good. Yeah. Because it's, it's a very small percentage of the people that are applying have experience or are qualified and then even when they are then you meet them in person and something's off and the main thing that we want to talk about today though is just to encourage all the chiropractors out there that are listening any business owners is as hard as it might be as desperate as you might be to add someone to your team that that little motto of slow to hire quick to fire it's hard to be quick to fire too I mean, there's been situations where we should have fired someone oh, and, yeah. we, and we waited. Yeah. But it's like anytime you have a red flag, anytime you have anything that is going to tell you this might not be a good fit, you should just act on it and yep. get rid of the person. Mm -hmm. Because it, it just, it almost never works out. No. Every time we give somebody the benefit of the doubt and, you know, maybe they'll change, maybe they'll pick it up, they don't. Slow to hire, quick to fire. Let's talk about the process of when you do get a good candidate or a decent candidate. How do you go through them? Like, let's say you have 10 people apply, mm -hmm. like you're hiring for a front desk position. Let's talk a little bit about the ad. I know we don't have it right in front of us to read it, but just paraphrase. So, our ad, what we recently started doing is posting for a dynamic employee, which is somebody who can be useful in any department that we have and not just a one trick pony since we like all of our employees to be universal. And so the ad is asking for somebody who's going to be upbeat, energetic, uh, interacting with patients. And the most important thing is share our core values. Right. So core values like health and wellness or mm -hmm. uh, health coming from the inside out, not the outside in. That is one thing that I stress when I talk to people on interviews instead of just being so 
forthcoming with some things. I just say we believe it comes from the inside out, not the outside in. Do you agree with that? Gotcha. Yeah. And then something else too that we also tread a tread a very careful line on, but we also want to get, have have a have an idea of where people are at on the whole COVID cult hysteria. Mm-hmm. Because we had someone about a year ago. She was really good front desk, but we found out that I reminded her too much of her dad, which we've heard twice now, <laughs> which yeah. is weird. Yeah. A lot of cool dads out there, sounds I like. I know. But right. <laughs> so so I, I, I reminded her of her dad because of all of our COVID educational stuff we have in our clinic. Because we we have stuff going to educate patients on the stuff they're not gonna see on mainstream media as far as what the studies have shown on COVID and healthcare and all this. And it's not like we ever changed. We've always been preaching natural health and healing. When all the COVID stuff started coming around, the true chiropractors out there that actually practice what they preach and believe it said, something's not right. This doesn't jive. This is not congruent with what we've been doing all of these years. Like, oh, we should wash everything down and decontaminate everything and live in a little bubble. And then, oh, this thing that came out from the pharmaceutical company, we should totally trust them. I mean, just so many red flags and and fire alarms were going off with that. And we had an individual that worked at the clinic that uh, apparently was biting her tongue really hard and never said anything when she interviewed. She was a really great employee, but she did not share the core values of that. Like she, you know, probably felt like chicken little, the sky was falling. Like every time someone came into the clinic without wearing a face mask. Yeah. Mind you, there's no face mask mandate here and there wasn't for a long, long time. So this was like the... 99% 99% of our patients were not yeah. wearing face masks. Okay, so that's something. As far as, you know, like a little side note too, I think something that should be added is you let people know that um, we also do not promote, you know, like unhealthy energy drinks and fast food. So if you want to do that sort of thing, it just doesn't come in the clinic because mm-hmm. that's something that really bothers me when I see that because it's, it's just so inconsistent. It, it, it's it's a matter of consistency. Mm-hmm. Patients are looking for that. When they, when they hear a message from the doctor and then they're looking at the team, they're looking at the staff, it's like if there's something that's so blatantly incongruent, it, 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 it makes the environment seem hypocritical and it gives them a very easy out to be like, oh yeah, this really isn't for real. It's not legit. However, on the flip side, when you have all the staff getting adjusted doing home care, doing traction in office, excelling through the belt system of functional movement. They've gone through the 12 week transformation. They can recite it inside and out. They're going to bed at a nice time. They're waking up early. They're exercising. I'm like, when all of that stuff's happening, it's a natural byproduct that patients are like, oh my gosh, this is such an awesome environment to be in. Now, I'm not saying that we ever had that perfect 100% compliance with everything, but as long as people are working within their means to get there in some way, shape, or form, Mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for in a new hire. So if you can find someone that's already wired like that from day one, awesome. Yeah. Because they're going to fit right in. Okay. So then with that, you, you have that conversation with them. They have the stuff on the ad talking about we need someone that's dynamic and congruent and natural health and healing and all that, then what's the mechanical process as far as how do you meet with them, interview, all of that? So first I will message them on Indeed. I will go through the ones that have potential and then obviously the high quality ones. I'll go through, message everybody. I can send out 10 messages and maybe three people will respond back. Wow. So then I will roll with those three people. Usually I do a quick phone call just to kind of hear their voice, get a feel for the tone of their voice. If I like what I hear, I will set up a Zoom interview, which I know those are kind of like outdated, but I personally like Zoom because I can see their body language. I can see how they act. And then I want to get a feel for how they act face to face, but not necessarily in person. Mm -hmm. So that way, when we do move to in person, I can see if they're the same person. Sure. And if they have the same answers. Right. And, 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 and that saves time too, of not having to set up, you know, all these in-person mm-hmm. interviews and then have people come in and, yeah, you know, they have like an appearance that's not going to be congruent with what we're looking for, mm-hmm. which means they have, you know, pink hair and a soda in one hand and, yeah. you know, a McDonald's hamburger in the other hand. And yeah. that's just normal. And they're like, I got to go 
oh, it's time for me to take my morning pharmaceutical, uh, <laughs> you know, just, just some of that you pick up on when you look at them through Zoom. Now, we've been led astray before. We, we've had people that have come in that have interviewed really well. And then we found out probably the most common thing we've seen recently in a couple people is they've had issues with significant others. Yes, that's a big one. They've been in really dysfunctional relationships. So that's a thing. Have you been asking about any of that without being too invasive? I, our recent new hire was very forthcoming because I asked, tell me a little bit about yourself. And so she was very forthcoming with the fact that she was married and this and that. And so I didn't have to ask that. Mm -hmm. um, but since we had that last employee, I haven't had to ask that question. Got it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what we're referring to is just a, a really dysfunctional relationship that will sabotage even a great team member. Yeah. They could be great and they could be this bleeding heart that's just you know, in this victim mentality with, with a boyfriend or husband or something. And then that just pulls them down. Cause then it's like, Oh, I can't make it to work because he took the car. I can't make it to work because he told me I'm not allowed to leave or, yep. and that's literally like to an extent what, what happened. Yeah. Those, and, both those situations have happened. And, and so pretty, and, and immediately when that happened, as much as we're like, Oh, such a bummer. This person's so good. We, we were, you know, so hopeful as much as it hurt, we just said, you're done. Yeah. We can't have that. No, mm -mm. no. Okay. So you go through the zoom interview and then once you think, okay, this person's legit, then you invite them into the clinic. Yep. I invite them into the clinic. I will have our front desk, give them a tour first, have them check out the office before they come in and sit down with me. I also do that. So our staff can get a feel for their personality, how they jive with them. Are they mm -hmm. interacting during the tour? So I'll have the staff give me a little bit of feedback before they bring them into the office to sit down with me. And then if everything's good, I'll sit down and talk to them. I try to, at that point, have the conversation be a little more casual so I can get a feel for their personality and then try and figure out their background, their situation, and just make sure that they're a good fit for the team. If I feel like our conversation went well, I'll invite them back in for a working interview, which is when they meet. Gotcha. And then something that we've been doing recently for the last couple of people is we'll, we'll go back in the adjusting room and we'll sit down and Danny, myself, and that new applicant will talk for anywhere between 10 and 20 and 30 minutes just to have a conversation and just to f try to figure out who they are. And it's, it, it's just diving a little deeper so that we don't make the mistake and hire someone that's not a good fit for the team, meaning they're not a good fit for us or we're not a good fit for them. I mean, it, yeah. it, it goes both ways. And something that I'll even bring up is like, you know, in a working environment like this, we're likely going to spend more time together than you are with your own family at, at, yeah. at certain points. So we have to make sure this jives and this is good. Like you have to like each other. You have to, you have to think the same and you know, you don't, you don't yeah. have to be a clone of everyone, but you have to align on certain things. It's like a dating process. And that's usually what I tell uh, people who are interviewing is that this is kind of like a dating process. We'll go on a first date and then, you know, then you get to the engagement point and then you decide that you want to get married. So we go through that process and I always tell them that our hiring process can be a bit long, usually seven to 10 days before we make a decision from the first time we meet them, just to make sure that they like us, we like them, everything aligns, the staff gets along with them. So it is a tedious process, but it's worth it in the end. And and like seven to 10 days gives them a chance to brew it over. It gives mm -hmm. us a chance to brew it over. If there's other applicants, we can see other applicants. And really seven to 10 days in the whole you know business world of how other companies work, there's a place right next to us. It's Idaho Urologic Institute. So it's a big urology clinic. And I remember I, I, I knew the CFO of that company. I, I met him at the gym. He came in a couple of years ago and was consulting with us on some of their practices. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to hear their hiring practice. Their hiring practice, I think, took, I think, like six weeks. Yeah. And and my thought was, man, if someone's looking for a job, are they going to wait six weeks? And his response, because I actually asked him that, his response is like, well, if they're not excited enough about the position, and they don't want to wait six weeks, we don't want to hire them. Right. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. So, so if you think about this as a long-term thing, like someone's coming in, not just for a two month job or a, even a six month job, like you want someone that's going to be there for at least a couple of years. If, if you're going through the level of training that we do for us to really re recoup the benefit of all the time that we've invested in helping develop this person from a communication standpoint to learning these skills, I would say it's a win 
if they stay with us for two years. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of an arbitrary number. I'm just throwing out there, but I would say two years is like, okay, you know what? They're moving on. They want to do something else. It, it took literally six months to get them trained up to the point where we felt like they're super well-rounded and they're always learning more stuff. Even after that point, it's not like it just stops at six months. Right. And that's, and that's pretty standard in this type of clinic environment. I know like in an adjustment only clinic, like a really basic clinic, it, it might be quicker to train someone in our clinic. There's more moving parts. Our staff, our staff has to be higher quality, mm-hmm. you know. And so, like to be on the team with us, I, I think is a really cool thing because it means that you're a very qualified, advanced individual. And I think another little thing to look at with your current staff. So everyone that's listening to this, look at your current staff right now and say, knowing everything I know about this person that's working with me now, would I hire them again? And if you are not quick to say yes, you should probably get rid of them or plan their exit strategy. Yes. So like I like I can tell you, like Danny, in, in a heartbeat, if I'm like, oh, I know everything about Danny, her work ethic, her personality, everything, would I hire her again? Yeah, totally. Uh-huh. Like let's clone Danny and get five more of them and we can take <laughs> over the world. But Danny's also a very, you know, hard to find individual. We've talked about that history as far as how we met and how that all worked out where you know, it was kind of like she just took on more and took on more and took on more. And something else too that I'll also add that's also like from the from the employer standpoint, and I don't think this is something that you and I ever discussed, but it's something that is interesting when you look at a staff member. Someone who proves themselves and doesn't ask for more until they've really proved themselves, mm-hmm. it makes it very easy to give them more. Mm-hmm. You know, there's lots of people that like, do a crappy job or they're just standard and they're like, is it time for my raise? Is it time for me to get more, you know, paid more? And you're like, no, you you know, and like, (laughs) I'm surprised you're even asking me versus someone else. that's like, I'll take on more. I'll take on more. And that's kind of how, how you've operated from the very beginning. I'll do whatever. I'll take on more. Yep. I'll learn that. I'll learn that. I'll learn that. And then Danny got all these skills developed, proved herself with all of these things, took on more and more and more and more. And then it was like, it was a very like easy, I think, thing for me when, when, you know, maybe on my end, I should have identified it and said, Hey, you've taken all of stuff. Let's, let's readjust our situation as, for, as far as compensation. So I didn't. And Danny was like, uh, Hey, you know, I think, and I'm like, absolutely, totally for sure. Let's do it. Let's figure something out. Cause it, it was well earned, well deserved that's that's a huge thing when you have a a staff person that's working with you and they're okay starting at a certain level and they understand they're going to prove themselves to then work up and there's always space for them to work up a little bit a little bit you know there's a certain cap to a certain extent because it's a chiropractic clinic it's it's not like you know you're going to get paid like three hundred thousand dollars a year or anything um and if that's the case i'm going to switch positions and i'm going (laughs) to do something else in the clinic but but like I'll go work front desk, but, um, anyway. Okay. So then at that point, talk a little bit about the like check-in process of like when the person starts working, we put together an offer letter, which I just realized I, did I even put an offer letter together? Um, no. no, I didn't. Okay. So I failed to put an offer letter together on our most recent new hire. So I'll have to do that. Okay. But the standard is we put an offer letter together. So we have it in writing. It's very, it's very, you know, professional and, I's are dotted, T's are crossed. And then we set up a training portal for them. Mm -hmm. They signed some things in our staff procedure manual and to protect our intellectual property and whatnot to give us some protection. And then we give them access. We give them a username and a password to a a video training site that we've built for our staff. We have a bunch of training videos. And if any of you are interested in learning how to do that, we can show you how we've done that. We do it through ClickFunnels, through the membership site. Same way that we host Move Now University, our, our program for chiropractors that a lot of you are members of or some of you have heard of, we, we use that platform to organize videos and training so that our staff has access to it. So we don't have to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. They can learn a lot of the basics or even more advanced things, take notes, show they understand it, and then we fine tune it in person or we clarify it in person. Yep. Speeds up the hiring process tremendously. Mm-hmm or not hiring the training process. Yeah. Um, and then what is it? A 60 day or 30 day, 30 day. So when we give them access to the training portal, one of the main points of that is they're fulfilling a two week notice. 
And so they can look at some of the training portal while they're fulfilling the two week notice at their old job. No. Oh, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the gotcha. training portal. So that way they're not coming in completely blind. Uh, if they don't have a chance to go through the training portal, then their first three days, they're watching videos and going through everything. So that way it's not a huge burden on whichever department is training them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have quizzes that go along with the training portal at certain checkpoints and certain sections. Once they complete those, they have a quiz that they have to take. I'll grade it. I'll go over it with them. If they don't do so well, then I'll make them watch the videos again and then we'll retest. Once I feel they're, they're adequate and they've got a good foundation, then I will put them in the department with the person who's training them. Got it. Got it. And just clarify that first part in case you, you guys didn't pick up on this. When Danny said they're training while they're fulfilling their two-week notice at their previous job. So we're expecting them to put a two-week notice if they're working somewhere else because we want them to at least do the same thing for us. That's another red flag when someone's like, oh, yeah, I don't need to put on my notice. You're like, yeah. oh, you're going to screw them over. You're going to screw us over next. Okay, got it. But while they're fulfilling their two-week notice, if they're really anxious and, and you know, a, a great fit for the team, they want to learn as quickly as possible. And our, our, our recent new hire, that's exactly how she was. You know, she, she, she actually came from another chiropractic clinic that was downsizing in a couple of ways. So it was a, it was a friendly exit on her end. They had given her notice and said, Hey, you can look for another job. You can work here until you find one. We then offered her a position. She finished out some, some time with them she started getting on our video training portal and, and learning things before she even stepped foot into the clinic. Yep. Which is great. So, okay. So then at that point we have a incentive process as well. I, I don't know if we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but we can just talk about this briefly. This was a thing that we came up with and Danny really built out really well in Asana, which is a project management software. We use this as a checklist process so that staff can essentially self-manage to a certain extent so that Danny doesn't have to be managing every little thing with them. She's ultimately the overall manager and she'll look at those checklists, but it automates the process where you can have multiple staff checking off their own things, showing their own accountability. Danny then looks at the checklist to make sure that they're checked off. Mm -hmm. They are never to check them off if they didn't complete something. That's a big no-no. So we have checks and balances and making sure that doesn't happen. Yep. And then the staff then gets incentivized a dollar an hour per week bonus if they complete their checklist for that entire week yep let's see what else so we talked about the incentive checklist how that works and what else and then and then in certain positions you know based on the offer letter based on the position based on other roles that the person takes on there may be another potential pay increase at like at like six months that's usually where we do a six month review yes okay Something else too that I just realized I haven't done the last couple of Thursdays. Check in. Yep, check in. So another thing that we had promised to do, and I'm just really bad at this, so I'm going to improve it. I'm going to do it this Thursday. Is every Thursday, like we have, what we have five staff. Yes. Okay. So each week at the end of a Thursday shift, because that's just a good time for me to be able to do it, and for staff and, and I to be able to meet, I rotate through our team. I meet with one person. And I check in with them. I ask them how they're doing and just see if they have anything that they want to share or pros or cons, or I give them some feedback if, if it's warranted. And we have that one-on-one -on -one meeting. The reason that we do that or aim to do that, because I haven't been doing that perfectly. I did that for several weeks and then I realized I dropped the ball on that. So I'm going to pick that back up too. All right. It's part of the reason we do these podcasts. We figure out all the things that we need <laughs> to improve on our end too. The reason we do that is so that if someone has something that they're like keeping inside that's bothering them or something they wanted to say or whatever, for, for whatever reason, if they didn't convey this to Danny, who knows why, they have the opportunity to do that with me. And it just helps to keep everyone grounded and on the same page and, you know, solve any sort of issues before they become too much of an issue. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else to say on that? I don't think so. Okay. I think we yeah. put some time into that. So hopefully this was helpful for everyone who is struggling through some hiring processes or trying to find the right person. Hopefully we gave you some good ideas, some tips. You can always reach out to us uh, on our Facebook group, Functional Movement for Chiropractors. Go ahead and request to join that. It's a free group. You can ask questions in that group, and that's an easy way to, to connect with myself or Danny. And what else? So join that group. Make sure you are part of the Move Now University Facebook page. So you can just go in there and like it. 
And if you have any questions or you want to know more about our systems or MoveNow University, we have a demo. It's a pre-recorded 30-minute video that I should probably redo at some point, but it's still relevant. There's just more stuff we've added to the program. We keep adding to it. It's demo.movenowu.com. So check that out. I would invite you to watch that. And we have a book as well. It's called Move Well Secrets. It's a book I wrote a few years ago. Still relevant stuff. It's a quick read. It's helpful. It's a good overview, kind of a 10,000 foot view of the whole functional movement rehab with chiropractic principles in a clinic. That's book.movenowu.com free book. So if you want that, just sign up and we'll send you a book. And uh, with that said, you'll hear those links again on the outro. We'll see you next week on the next video. Uh, we have a, a guest that's going to be on this next one. That's going to be exciting and it'll jive because I think Danny has a follow up with her hand. Yeah. Because she broke her hand and she looks like it's autographed now. Your cast. Yeah. Daxton signed it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> great. All right, cool. Well, over and out, everyone, and we will see you next week. Want more Move Now secrets? If so, then go get your copy of my best-selling book and watch my 30-minute behind-the-scenes Move Now demo. My book is called Move Well Secrets, and you can get your free copy at book.movenowu.com and watch the 30-minute demo of our exclusive doctor training portal at demo.movenowu.com. With these two resources, you'll find my top 22 secrets that we've used to build one of the smoothest running, results producing, and super profitable exercise departments within a chiropractic clinic in the entire profession.